It is always fun to have the Stanley Cup here. It truly is the best trophy in sports. Um, I'll admit I was hoping you'd give me a day with it this time around where I could just... <laughs> um, before I was president, I just want to point out, you, the Blackhawks, had gone almost half a century without seeing this thing. <laughs> now you've got the hat trick, uh, so I think it's pretty clear the kind of luck I've brought uh, to this team. Uh, and by the way, we've got a state dinner with Canada coming up, so we may just leave it right in the middle of the room. <laughs> just, to, just to gloat a little bit. Just to gloat a little bit. Um, we've got a lot of Hawks fans uh, in the house today, including a uh, congressman from Chicago, Mike Quigley, who still plays, by the way, uh, still plays hockey. I want to congratulate uh, NHL Deputy Commissioner Bill Daly. Uh, we got Blackhawks owner Rocky Wirtz, and we have President and CEO John McDonough. Give them a big round of applause. Uh, obviously, uh, a team doesn't win this often unless you've got a great front office and, and folks who've built a great culture. We also have to give a big round of applause for a man who just moved into second place on the NHL's all-time wins list, and that is the coach, Joel Quinville. Oh. So between Coach Q, Coach Ditka, Ozzie Guillen, Phil Jackson, it appears the secret for any coach hoping to bring a title to Chicago is to grow out your mustache. <laughs> Ozzie had a goatee when the White Sox won in 05, but that's close enough. Now, uh, this year's title was a little different. For the first time in 77 years, the Blackhawks won the title in Chicago on home ice in front of their fans. Uh, it was the high water mark for a team that's been in the midst of one of the most dominant stretches uh, in all of sports. Three titles in six years, yes, it is worth cheering for. <laughs> We got a young fan right there <laughs> eating a hockey puck. <laughs> the uh, conference, uh, three titles in six years, conference finalists in five out of seven years, one of the best records in hockey this year as well. Each year that target on their back grows a little bit bigger. Each year the salary cap makes it a little tougher to keep this group together. But each year the Hawks keep on winning. It is, as I said, a tribute to the front office. It is also, by the way, a tribute to uh, the head of uh, uh, scouting who just told me that he could help me pick uh, my Supreme Court justice. <laughs> um, where is it? Mark. Mark. Yeah. Yeah. Right. <laughs> so, he volunteered. He said, I know what I'm doing. Um, of course, most of all, it's a tribute to the guys on the ice. Uh, you all know the big names on this team. Seven players who were here for all three titles, uh, the guys you've heard me talk about twice before. Uh, so today I want to actually give the spotlight to two of the unsung heroes on this team. And they're the kind of guys uh, behind the scenes on every winning team in sports uh, and beyond. Uh, first, there is uh, Kimo Timonen. Now, Kimo uh, already had a great career uh, before last season. They had been to the Stanley Cup final, Olympic final, World Championship final. He had lost them all. In August, he was diagnosed with blood, blood clots in his lungs and his calf. Wasn't even sure he'd play again. He's traded to Chicago midseason, fought back on the ice, his final NHL game at the age of 40. Kimo finally ho hosted, uh, hoisted the cup. Uh, and, and, and that, first of all, as an old guy, it makes me feel good. Uh, but it's also a sign of a, of a great career and somebody who's just able to stick with it and consistently contribute uh, and make a huge difference. And so give Kimo a big round. Of uh, then we've got backup goalie Scott Darling, who, go ahead and wave, Scott. So Scott grew up idolizing legendary Blackhawks goalie Eddie Balfour. Came up big in the playoffs against Nashville. Uh, but I want to highlight something he did just a couple weeks ago when this team was on a road trip in Arizona. Struck up a conversation 
with a man down on his luck. Uh, Scott, I suspect, recognized some of his own struggles in the past, thought he might be able to help. Uh, he, sent him up, he, he set him up in a hotel room, paid the bill for a month, hoping that that would be enough time for the man to get back on his feet. Scott didn't tell anybody about this except for his new fiance, but a couple of days later, the story went viral. Uh, apparently, an Uber driver told the story to a beer league hockey player. Uh, I'd never heard of beer league hockey. <laughs> but it sounds like fun. <laughs> and that player posted it online. Um, and I could have more respect for Scott's modesty, but now that it's out there, uh, I think it's the kind of good deed that bears repeating. Uh, a champion reached out to help somebody who could use a hand, even though he didn't have to, even though nobody was looking, even though he wasn't asking anybody for credit. I, I like to think that reflects something about our city, about Chicago. Uh, it's a very American thing to do. And so, Scott, I just want to say thank you for And I think uh, this is reflective of a lot of great work that the Blackhawks are doing as well. Last season, they raised more than $2 million for nonprofits that work with local kids and their families. They're supporting health and wellness, education and housing initiatives. They brought a few wounded warriors who were patients of Walter Reed here today to say thank you for their outstanding service to our country. They're building a new practice facility, but they're not just keeping it all to themselves. They're opening it up to the community, including inner city kids who might not otherwise get a chance to skate. The ISSG members will work together with the Syrian parties to ensure the immediate approval and the completion of all pending UN access requests. As everybody knows, there have been about 114 of them, only 13 or so, 14 approved, uh, and that has to change.